Hey guys, um, I promised after I put up my post about um, my health issues that I would make a video to explain a little bit more in depth. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, since this is originally a makeup YouTube channel, I thought it only appropriate to put a full face of makeup on. Um, so at least while I'm talking about something that's completely unmakeup related, you can stare at my pretty makeup. So, um, I have time to do this today because I'm supposed to be sitting getting IV therapy right now. But for the first time ever in my life, my veins would not cooperate, which is extremely strange because I have huge veins and Dr. K and I have never ever had a problem. But maybe I'm not hydrated properly. Um, we tried three different times and it hurt really bad, which it never hurts. And I got sent home. So I'm going to try again tomorrow. And the IV therapy I'm doing is actually for um, detox. So back to the original reason I'm making this video. Okay, so um, for those of you who know or don't know, I did make an announcement on my social media that um, I got Im breast implants at the end of 2012. And by summer of 2013, I was having major health issues um, related to my thyroid and hormones and different things like that. And it just progressively got worse and worse. In the summer, I started having really bad brain fog and then memory problems and my hair all broke off. I still have brittle hair that I'm dealing with. It just breaks off, like especially all in this area in chunks, which it's never done before. Um, and I was putting on weight, like a pound a week um, even though I was exercising and I'd never gained weight before. And then by September, I went, I did go to doctors. They told me I was fine. There's nothing wrong with me. Gotta love that. Um, and I knew there was something wrong. And then by September, I was having chronic pain in my leg, in my hip, um, and my foot. I got MRIs. It showed tendinitis. We didn't know why. I hadn't exercised for over a year. So there was all kinds of weird, crazy things happening but I never made the connection to my implants because one, when you get breast implants, uh, you're told how to check for a leak or a rupture. And other than that, you know, other than infection or a rupture or a leak, nothing else is really put on your radar. Um, there is something called silicone toxicity syndrome and I had all of the symptoms of that. But unfortunately, I had never heard of that until about a month ago. My doctor never mentioned it. I had never heard of it. So when I started to get ill, um, I do remember it crossing my mind once, like this is kind of weird that I've been getting sick since I got implants. But again, it wasn't on my radar and I thought, well, that's ridiculous. Just never really thought of it. And I had been having running injuries and was tired before my surgery anyway. So I thought, oh, it's just all an extension of that, which part of it may have been. So a lot of people are asking me like, what is the connection between implants and Lyme's disease? Don't you have Lyme's disease? So. I did um, test, according to CDC standards, my Western blot Lyme test was actually negative, but according to my doctor standards, um, it was positive. And so um, I had, it was, I was positive on multiple titers. I showed that I had the Brugophori, um, I can't even say that word, but anyways, that I had that in my bloodstream. I also tested positive for Hashimoto's disease, which is an autoimmune where your body attacks your thyroid and I had all the antibodies for that as well. And so, um, do I have Lyme's disease? Yes. Do I hope that I don't have Lyme's disease? Yes. Um, and that's kind of a weird thing and hard to explain. So there is a very, very small chance that when I take my implants out that I will get better, but most likely I will have to detox for quite a while. And hopefully my body, by removing that object, will actually be able to respond to my treatment better so that I can get better. But there are women who are diagnosed um, and test positive for Lyme's disease and get their implants out and actually get better quite quickly. So, of course, that's the miracle I'm praying for, but it's not what I'm expecting. So just to explain to you kind of the theory, what we think happened. Um, in the last two years, I've also discovered that I have a double MTHFR mutation, which means my body does not detox like a normal person's body would detox. So because it's a double mutation, sorry, I'm staring at my funny cat. Because it's a double mutation, I, um, 
my body only detoxes at about 20% of what a normal person's body would. So I can't methylate B vitamins or folic acid and I just, I don't produce glutathione properly, which is what helps flush out toxins. So not only do I have the regular amount of toxins that we are just getting from our environment every day and not able to flush those out, what we think happened, um, so sorry, it, it actually makes me predisposed to a lot of other things, but I had no idea about this mutation when I got implants. So why do some people get sick from implants right away and why do other people don't get sick until 10, 15, 20 years down the road after implants? Well, probably most likely because um, the people who get sick right away like me have some kind of a genetic predisposition to get sick, you know, if we throw the wrong things at us or if we have the right amount of circumstances or the perfect storm as we call it. So what we think happened, what mine and Dr. K's theory is, and what happens with a lot of women, is that when the implants went in, it actually caused an autoimmune response in my body. My body saw this foreign object and wanted to attack it and get it out. This suppressed my immune system, and while my immune system was suppressed, it allowed for multiple strains of bacteria and viruses to basically walk in that open door and take over. Uh, plus with the immune su suppression, which would be why I got the Hashimoto's as well and a host of other things that you probably don't want to hear about. But um, I've had everything from candida to um, multiple viruses, EBV, the Lyme, um, a whole bunch of other bacteria, um, infections that come with that. Um, like I said, headaches, chronic fatigue. I've been diagnosed with fibromyalgia, the Hashimoto's. Um, memory problems, sleep problems, bladder problems. I actually think I have another autoimmune that affects your bladder. Um, I could probably give you a list of like this long of things that I have dealt with in the past two and a half years. So um, I hope that explains a little bit more. I am feeling very, very, very hopeful that when I go through this with this surgery on November 20th, that my body will finally be on the path to be able to recover. I have not been able to run in two and a half years, with the exception of a couple times where I've tried to run, but I've never made it. Uh, the most I ever made it in the last two and a half years was this winter, like January to March, I was able to run about six to 10 miles a week. I used to run 60 to 80 miles a week, depending on what I was training for, if that gives you any idea. So, and um, I'm currently at the point where I have such bad knee pain, it feels like I have arthritis in my knees that um, for no, no reason other than all the crap that's going on in my body, I couldn't even run a quarter mile right now. So for me, that's pretty rock bottom. Um, the rest of me goes through phases. I get really, really exhausted where it's hard for me to just get by for a few days to feeling okay and having energy to having... Uh, my pain in my hip has come back. It did get better a little bit this year when I did a lot of detox. Um, the pain in my hip and my knee and my foot. So sometimes that's really bad and sometimes it's better. I'm definitely not as bad as I was a year ago. A year ago I couldn't even stand for more than an hour so I had to downsize my business and I had to... It's just, it's stolen a lot from my life. It's taken a lot out of my personal life. It's taken a lot of time away from my family. I don't have energy to do the things that I used to. We just don't do a lot of the things that I used to because I can't. Um, so I know on the outside I look fine, which is probably part of the hardest part of it because people say to me all the time, well, you look great. And there's been a few times in my life where I've been like, if one more person tells me I look great, I'm going to punch them in the face. Um, so yes, lucky for me, I know how to do makeup and so I can really mask a lot of how I'm feeling. But um, I'm not myself. It's been... It's been a good three years since I've had what was good health and able to do all the things that I loved to do. I, would, I loved to run and exercise and do lots of fun things with my kids and work a lot and I juggled everything and I did it very well. So it's hard now to have such limitations and just, I feel old. I'm turning 37 and I feel like I'm turning 67. So. I'm very hopeful and excited to get my life back and I hope that this will help bring awareness to other people and um, I am going to come back after my surgery with Dr. K. So if you have questions about this, please write your questions below and Dr. K and I will try to answer them in the next video. Um, as far as detox and stuff, I will be doing a lot of IV therapy 
I will be doing, um, gosh, I have a whole list of it. So I'll come back and make another video on what does the detox from something like this look like? Or even if you just have like Lyme and other things like that, what does that look like? So anyways, I hope that that explains a little bit more. Sorry for rambling on. If you have questions, let me know. Um, if you want to take a look at a website, if you're concerned that you might have be having difficulties from your breast implants, there's a great website called Breast Plant Illness .com, I think it is. Um, so you can check that out. And I will post all of that below in the description as well. Okay, thanks.